Hello everyone. It's been quite some time, but I'm finally back making videos. Welcome back to another devlog for my Voxel engine. Since last devlog, I've completely overhauled the engine's lighting system. It now supports both hard and soft shadows, as well as indirect global illumination, all in real time. I'll take you through the implementation of each of these techniques, starting with the simplest. Hard shadows are shadows with sharp edges. Each voxel is either in full shadow or full sunlight, with no in between. In order to determine if a particular point in the scene is in shadow, we can simply cast a ray towards the sun. If it hits something before exiting the scene, then that point is in shadow. The basic idea to compute shadows in my engine is to shoot one such shadow ray for each voxel, and consider the whole voxel in shadow if that ray hits something. This seems simple enough but we quickly run into the issue of determining which voxels exactly we need to shoot shadow rays from. We want to only compute shadows for voxels which are visible from the camera, but each voxel may be visible from multiple pixels, so we need to avoid shooting duplicate rays. The solution is to store visible voxels in a hash map. When a primary ray hits a voxel, we obtain a 64-bit ID which is unique to that voxel. We then use this ID as a key in a hash map. This hash map stores a boolean representing whether or not that voxel has been hit from the camera yet. If it hasn't, then we add it to a queue, and update the boolean with an atomic operation to protect against data races. This way, each voxel only gets added to this queue once. We then run a separate shader on each voxel in the queue and cast the appropriate shadow ray, updating a shadowed boolean in the hash map if it's occluded. A final full screen, final lighting pass is then run, where each pixel looks up the voxel it hit in the hash map, darkening its color if it's in shadow. Soft shadows are much more difficult. In the real world, soft shadows occur when the sun is only partially occluded from a point. In this image, for example, only half of the sun's light rays hit the voxel, so we'd expect it to only look 50% in shadow. Computationally, this involves shooting multiple rays per voxel towards random points on the sun, and computing what percentage of those rays are occluded. We can accomplish this in the engine by using the same hash map concept as before. We swap out the booleans is visible and is shadowed for analogous integers num visible and num shadowed. Then, for each pixel that hits a given voxel, we again use its ID as a hash and atomically increment the num visible integer. We then modify our previous shadow shader to run per pixel instead of per voxel and shoot a ray towards the sun with a small random offset to its direction. We atomically increment num shadowed if it is occluded. The final lighting shader can then compute the final percentage of the voxel in shadow as num shadowed over num visible. And we have soft shadows. This can be pretty noisy though, as we are jittering the shadow ray completely randomly. A better approach would be to stratify the random samples. That is, ensure that each ray covers a small subregion of the sun's area that no other ray covers. Since we know exactly how many rays we're going to shoot per voxel thanks to the num visible integer, we can do exactly that. Given that a ray was the ith pixel to hit a voxel that was visible from n total pixels, we offset that ray by the ith point on a Fibonacci sphere of n points. If you don't know, the Fibonacci sphere is an easy to compute way to evenly distribute, or stratify, n points on a sphere. Using this approach, the noise is reduced drastically and it has the added benefit of making our soft shadows completely deterministic.
Global illumination is one of the most difficult computer graphics techniques to get right. It is the process by which surfaces can be lit indirectly. Light can hit a surface, then bounce around the scene, losing energy until it eventually hits a target point. Computationally, this is often done with an algorithm called path tracing. For each visible point, we cast a ray randomly in the hemisphere above that point. If that ray hits another point, we repeat the process until eventually hitting a light source. Once we hit a light source, we add that light, multiplied by the energy loss from all the bounces, to the initial voxel's total incoming light. As you can probably tell, this is a highly random, high-dimensional process, and thus is subject to a lot of noise. In the engine, we compute this very similarly to how we computed soft shadows. We add to our hash map a VEC3 containing the total indirect light. Then we add a new shader running per pixel. From each pixel, we cast a ray in a random direction above the initial point, keeping track of all the points we've hit so far. We then iterate this process until the ray doesn't hit anything, going out into the sky. Once this happens, we multiply the sky color by the color of all the voxels we hit on our path, and atomically add this to the indirect light in our hash map. Then, the final lighting shader just has to divide this light by num visible, and we have global illumination. Well, sort of. Due to the random nature of path tracing, it's really noisy. And it doesn't help that, in practice, I don't even run the global illumination shader at full resolution. I do it at half res and cap the number of bounces at two to keep the performance at a reasonable level. To fix this, we can accumulate global illumination samples over time. If a player is looking at a voxel, chances are they'll be looking at it again next frame since there's only a few milliseconds between frames. Thus, we can reuse our light values from last frame to reduce noise on the current frame. To accomplish this, we keep two hash maps, one for the current frame and one from the previous frame. Before we run our final lighting shader, we average samples from the previous frame with our current frame, allowing us to reuse all the computation already done. With this simple change, the noise is already mostly gone. This does unfortunately mean that the lighting takes a few frames before it looks acceptable, but at 60 FPS this is barely noticeable, and there's still a lot of room for improvement. We can also mark certain voxels as emissive, meaning they emit light, and add this light to our global illumination if a path hits one. Clamping the amount of samples we can accumulate over time, we can make the lighting algorithm completely dynamic, allowing us to edit the scene. This forest scene looks pretty good, and is a good representation of the type of environments you might find in a video game, but I wanted to test the engine on a more academic scene to make sure it was correct. The Cornell Box is a fairly famous scene in computer graphics used to test global illumination algorithms. I recreated it in the engine, and I was quite surprised at how accurate it looked. Even with only two light bounces, you can still clearly see the light bleeding from the walls onto the objects. Using smaller voxels and a more detailed object, and it's starting to look pretty realistic. Overall, the lighting system has turned out great in my opinion, and has been very enjoyable to develop. For those of you interested in the performance, 
The forest scene runs at around 70 FPS at 1080p on my laptop RTX 3050 Ti, which is about equivalent to a desktop GTX 1060 in terms of compute. I apologize for the long wait on this video. I've been busy with school and a new job, but hopefully it was worth the wait. I'm looking forward to the new year, and I have some pretty cool content planned for you guys. Thanks for sticking around.